All right. Good morning. Good to be back on the stage, not on the chairs. Well, in this ordinary life, few weeks after the Pentecost, ordinary life, we are ordinary people, but we have extraordinary God, extraordinary super Jesus. And we have been studying different kind of what Jesus did in the past few weeks, all right? So this morning, we're going to look again, what did Jesus do? What did Jesus do? Let's open your Bible, hard copy or a smartphone to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, verse 21 to 43, all right? Mark chapter 5, 21 to 43, I'm going to read it uh, to you guys. A girl restored to life and a woman healed. When Jesus has, had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and pleaded with him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed, it on, pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from a flow of blood for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Verse 28, For she said, if I but touch his cloak, I will be made well. Immediately, her flow of blood stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately, aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my cloak? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the synagogue leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the synagogue leader, do not be afraid, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, and the brother of James. When they came to the synagogue leader's house, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's fathers and mother, those who were with him, and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talita kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl stood up and began to walk about. She was about 12 years of age. As they were overcome with amazement, he strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Wow, let me take a breath <laughs> after reading, reading these many verses. In this ordinary life, life is full up and down. As a matter of fact, some said, if there are no ups and downs in your life, it means you are dead. Like in the heartbeat monitor, you know, there's no up and down, up and down, you're dead. And recently, maybe some of us are experiencing more downs than up. What do we do when we are in the down moments of our life? As I was preparing this message, I actually changed direction on Monday as I was reading the scripture, I was already knowing that, okay, I'm going to head this direction. 
But then I remember this one song that I liked last year by a kind of like a new artist called Kathy Nicole. And the lyric is kind of like, wow, I think I like to link this song with the, my sermon this week, and it's going to be my sermon title. Hold on. The title is Hold On. Hold on just a little bit longer. Let me just read to you briefly the lyrics of the song. Now, I, I enjoy Christian music very much. I listen to it very often. It encouraged me a lot. So many of you who don't hear to Christian worship music, try, all right? Do it. So the lyric goes like this. Small clouds all around could not see your face. Darkness consumed me, stuck in the bitterness. But I know there's light that is waiting up ahead. So I'll stay in the fight and look to the one who said, this is the chorus, Hold on just a little bit longer. I know it's going to be okay. These days are going to make you stronger. You'll find purpose in the pain. Hold on just a little bit longer. Deep down, there is a well of faith. Let hope arise as you are lifting up my name. And just hold on. Just hold on. Hold on. Now, you can Google the song and YouTube, watch, watch it, YouTube it. Now, the passage where we just read, this is a story of two ladies, all right? As a matter of fact, Jesus called them daughters, daughters. This is a story of two girls, two ladies who they experience life and death situation. They have been suffering for quite some time. We don't know how long did the little girl suffer. We know how long did the woman suffer. How long? How many years? Say it to me. Tell it. Twelve long years. When COVID started, I hope, please make it gone sooner. It did not go away until many, many years later. Now, this was 12 years. A little girl who was known, the identity-wise, Jairus' daughter, and an older woman who has no name, unknown, unnamed. Both are sick and desperate for help. One has her father helping out. And the other one is very determined to help herself to come to Jesus. So what do people do when they are so desperate? What do you do when you are desperate for something or when you want to get out of the hard situation? Desperation usually often comes, it happens when you are in the bottom of the pit. In this gospel story, I would like to highlight three main points. There are so many points I can take out from this passage, but God told me, Andreas, you do not have one hour to speak. You only have 15, 20 minutes. And don't share everything. Focus on these three main things, especially in relation to hold on just a little bit longer. Hold on. So the three highlights, the three points that I would like to highlight. Number one, Jairus and the unnamed lady saw and heard about Jesus. Jairus, with his eyes, he saw Jesus. He came, he saw Jesus. Verse 22, it says, Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw him, one of the synagogue's leaders, one of the top elders in the Jewish community, he was so desperate. He heard about Jesus coming, he saw Jesus. And then the unknown lady, she heard about Jesus. With her ears, she heard about Jesus. Jesus is coming to town. At that time, there was no TikTok. There was no IG stories. There was no WhatsApp. There was no even email blast telling you about what is coming this Sunday. 
but see heard about Jesus coming to town. And with her ears, she heard it. Jairus saw Jesus. The lady, the unnamed lady, heard about Jesus. And then what did they do? Number two, Jairus and the unnamed lady came to Jesus. With all their physical well-being, they come to Jesus. Jairus saw Jesus. He ran. Because of the audience, you know, I, I cannot demonstrate, you know. For me, this is like, oh, it restricts me from going here and there. He ran. Remember, he's a synagogue leader. He could have just waited for Jesus to come. No, he ran. And not only he ran, the scripture says, he fell at his feet. A posture that not many people did at that time. And maybe most likely the kind of body, physical postures that we don't do it very often. But when desperation comes, Jairus ran and fell at his feet. And what did the lady do? This unknown lady. She heard about Jesus. Remember, she was sick. Full of, I mean, bleed blood. She Sneaked in. I, would, I like to use the word. She sneaked in. She came up, verse 27, she came up in, behind him in the crowd. Two times in that passage, it talks about large crowd. They were bumping into each other. Large crowd, but she tried to sneak in. You know what? I'm going to come up behind him and touch his cloak. I'm going to do that. The two people saw, heard about Jesus. They were very determined. I'm going to come to Jesus. Jairus came to Jesus. The woman with, sneaked in with her hands. She touched Jesus. And number three, Jairus and the unnamed lady begged, pleaded. Touch Jesus. Jairus, the synagogue leader, after running, falling, this time he's asking a lot more, often much. He pleaded with him, with Jesus, repeatedly. All right? I'm trying to picture in my video format, how did it go? Probably he ran, he fell, <laughs> catching his breath. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, please, please. My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be well. <laughs> please. Now that is the kind of begging that he did, all right? Out of desperation. What did the lady do? Uh, so many people, I'm not going to give up. She touched his cloak. If I but touch his cloak, I will be made well. Ah, trying to find a way to touch Jesus. Now when I research again the song by Kat and Nicole about this hold on, I like the song, I mean, I like the background story. It says, she wrote, This song is incredibly important to me, and it's a little bit harder for me to talk about it because it is such a deep part of my story, and it is a little bit darker. I have dealt with a lot of anxiety and depression in my life, and even at one point, I had suicidal thoughts. Plural, thoughts. There was one point where I picked up a bottle of pills and I took it to the bathroom. And when I did it, there was nothing in my path, but that bottle of pills fell onto the floor and spilled. In that moment, 
I felt God saying to me, hold on, I am not done yet. And Kathy says, I picked up those pills and threw them in the trash can because I know that God still had a plan and a purpose for my life. Perhaps some of us are in the downs moment of our lives now. It could be physically you are sick or half sick, so sick, emotionally, and then maybe some of us are experiencing spiritual dryness. And you need Jesus. What should we do? What do we need to do? Well, remember God says, hold on. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. And then secondly, come to Jesus and beg and ask and touch him. We heard a lot about Jesus. We heard a lot about sermon on the topic of Jesus, God, our extraordinary Jesus, powerful God. We heard a lot, but maybe we haven't really come to him. We heard from last week that Jesus could calm the storm, whatever storm in your life, right? Jesus said, stop, stop. It stopped. We need to come to Jesus and beg and ask or even touch him. Will Jesus kick you away or reject you? Will he? No. In verse 24, when Jairus was asking him, Jesus, please, come. Verse 24, it says, so he went with him. So Jesus went with him. And in this situation, Jesus showed his power in the small room, smaller setting. When Jesus did the miracle, when Jesus healed the daughter, it was in a smaller setting. In fact, Jesus said, don't tell anyone. But of course, the news spread out. Will Jesus kick you out away, kick you away when you ask for help? Will he reject you? Of course not. He said, even to the unknown, unnamed lady who touched him, he told her in a very personal way, all right? Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Now, that instant, Jesus did the miracle in the larger setting, large crowd. Now, when you read again that passage about the lady who, came, who tried to touch Jesus, it was so crowded. She touched him. And then Jesus said, who touched me? And then Jesus' funny disciple said, dude, there's a lot of people here. Anybody can touch you. Now, did you, I mean, I think Jesus knew who did it, right? He's God. He knows everybody. He knows even the problem. He, he knows even what is coming. He knows it, but he wants to display to the people around him, you know what? This is what I'm, what's going to happen, and this is what I'm going to tell you. So who touched me? Who touched me? And you know what? The lady came and then kind of confessed, ah, me. Are you going to punish me, Jesus? She thought she's going to get punishment. Sometimes we thought that we are going to come to Jesus for help and then going to be punished. No, we're not. And Jesus told her, daughter, not just, this is very intimate, all right? okay? Very intimate, daughter. Not just, hello. Who are you again? What's your name? No, right away, Jesus said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Your faith healed you. Jesus did not kick people when people come to him. Now, maybe some of us think that, well, in this life, I have no problem. I do not have any issues. 
Right now, I'm in the ups moment of my life. I'm not down. Let me think about it carefully. After one minute, yeah, no, I don't think so. That's okay. But maybe you are like Jairus, who knows someone in your circle who has issue, who needs Jesus. They are so desperate that they need to see Jesus. And you are the Jairus who needs to be the one who takes Jesus to his life or her life. Remember, hold on. God is not done yet. Hold on a little bit longer. So when we are in the down moments of our life, hold on. Don't give up. I'm not done yet with you. And then secondly, you come to Jesus. I don't know what kind of format, how you need to come to Jesus and ask him to do something. I don't know. You need to ask Jesus, okay, what do I need to do, God? And then number three, the last one, last point, maybe the harder one, the waiting part. Yeah? The waiting part. The little girl waited for a little bit for Jesus to heal her. The unnamed lady waited 12 years, spent all her fortune, so many physicians, and she got worse. You come to Jesus, you ask for help, then you wait. I know waiting is not fun, but let's wait for Jesus to do something. Waiting is not fun. Last week, I was able, I, I did a short-term trip last week outside of Indonesia and visited one of the refugee camp, a camp. So someone who has been waiting for 12 years, talk to little kids who has been waiting for three, four years to get the permit to enter the free country. Speaking about waiting, Waiting is not easy. It's hard. But remember like what the psalmist said and what Jeremiah said in the verse that we just read. That as we wait, God will turn our mourning into dancing. And Jeremiah said, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Let's pray. Let's take one minute to chew and digest God's word and ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do? What's the application for me today? Whatever situation you have right now, or you might know someone who are in a harder situation, physically, emotionally, spiritually, come to Jesus. Touch him. Ask for help. He's not going to reject you. Religious leaders might reject you, but not Jesus. Dear Lord, you did many miracles and you have been doing it also in these days and age. Help us, O oh Lord, to hold on 
Hold on a little bit longer. You are doing something. And help us, O oh Lord, as we go through this period of time. May our life display your steadfast love and your glory so that many would be drawn to you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.